There is no shortage of heroes from the Vietnam War. Either fighting in the Khe Sanh's pitched battles, Hamburger Hill, or the air above, American men displayed unrivaled bravery and commitment to fight for their country. The Vietnam War has been a large part of the life of soldiers who served during that time. Each of these veterans had a distinct personal experience during the war, with many incredible stories of bravery and heroism to tell. One such story is of Roy Perez Benavides. Watch the video till the end to know all about the badass soldier who lived his life with dignity and determination to the end. Early Life Born on August 5, 1935, Raul, a.k.a. Roy Perez Benavides, was born in Lindenau, Texas, near Cuero, in DeWitt County. Roy's father died of TB when he was just two years old, and his mother died of the same disease five years later. Roy Benavides, his younger brother Roger, and half-sister Mara Guadalupe relocated to El Campo, where they were reared by their grandfather, uncle, aunt, and eight other cousins. Benavides had to work to make a living since he was a child. He worked at tire shops, farms, and even shined shoes at the local bus station. Roy attended school until the age of 15, at which point he dropped out to work full-time to support his family. After two years in 1952, Benavides joined the Texas Army National Guard during the Korean War, and then enrolled in the regular U.S. Army in June 1955. After serving in the Army for four years, he married Hilaria Coy in 1959 and finished his airborne training in the same year. After finishing his training, Roy was posted to the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg. After serving for three years in that division, he was assigned to an ARVN infantry regiment in South Vietnam as an advisor. The Unfortunate Incident In 1965, Benavidez stumbled on a landmine while on patrol with a South Vietnamese Army regiment and woke up paralyzed from the waist down in the Philippine Islands the next day. Doctors gave him the worst possible news, that the damage to his spine was too serious and he may never walk again and would be medically discharged from the army. However, Roy Benavidez had different plans. Refusing to give up and resolved to return to his colleagues, he began a nightly personal workout routine. Every night, he dragged himself out of bed, over to the wall, and slowly redeveloped his lost strength. Benavidez eventually went from sitting to standing to shuffling along the wall. When the physicians arrived with his final discharge paperwork months later, Benavidez stood up and walked. Consequently, instead of sending him home, the Army compressed 18 months of physical treatment into six months and sent him to Fort Bragg, North Carolina. The day that defined a lifetime. Benavidez could barely walk when he rejoined the 82nd Airborne. He was able to run 10 miles after six months. After regaining his strength, Benavidez was assigned to the 5th Special Forces Group and returned to Vietnam after completing Special Forces selection and training as a weapons expert in 1967. On the 2nd of May 1968, helicopters dropped a 12-man Special Forces reconnaissance team west of Loc Ninh, Vietnam, to gather intelligence on confirmed large-scale enemy activities. As the North Vietnamese Army controlled and patrolled this area on a daily basis, the team ran into significant enemy resistance after only a short time on the ground, prompting them to request emergency evacuation. Due to heavy enemy weapons and anti-aircraft fire, three helicopters attempted extraction but were unable to land. When these helicopters returned to offload wounded crew members and examine aircraft damage, Sergeant Benavidez was at the forward operating base in Loc Ninh, monitoring the operation over the radio. Being the passionate and high-willed soldier he was, Sergeant Benavidez volunteered to join a returning plane to help with the second extraction effort. He piloted the aircraft to a nearby clearing where he leapt from the hovering chopper and raced approximately 75 meters under withering small arms fire to the damaged squad, only to witness that all of the team members were either dead or wounded. Benavidez himself was shot in the right leg, face, and head before reaching the team's position. Despite his terrible injuries, he took command, relocating the unit and directing their fire to allow an evacuation plane to land and the loading of wounded and deceased team members. He then launched smoke canisters to guide the plane to the team's location. The Will to Survive Despite his serious injuries and the fact that he was under heavy enemy fire, he carried and pulled half of the wounded squad to the waiting plane. He then ran alongside the aircraft as it moved to pick up the remaining squad members, providing defensive fire. He rushed to gather the body and sensitive information on the dead team leader as the enemy's firing escalated. Sergeant Benavidez was seriously injured in the abdomen and back by small weapons fire and grenade shrapnel as he approached the leader's body. Furthermore, the helicopter pilot was mortally wounded, and as a result, the helicopter crashed at approximately the same time. 
Despite his severe wounds and increasing difficulties, Sergeant Benavides was able to collect the sensitive documents and return to the wreckage, where he assisted the wounded out of the overturned plane and assembled the dazed survivors into a defensive perimeter. He traveled around the perimeter offering water and ammo to his exhausted soldiers in order to instill a new desire to live and fight. Faced with a growing enemy force and a desperate squad, Sergeant Benavides summoned his courage, ordered tactical air attacks, and commanded the fire of supporting gunships to suppress the enemy's fire, and that allowed another extraction attempt to take place. While delivering first aid to a wounded team member just before another rescue helicopter could arrive, he was shot in the thigh again by small weapons fire, but his tenacious spirit kept him going. While delivering team members to the helicopter, Roy was attacked by a Viet Cong soldier who hit him in the mouth with the butt of his weapon, dislocating his jaw and locking it into place. However, Benavides was about to kill the soldier in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but Roy was unable to speak and could not move his eyelids due to the heavy layer of dried blood on his face and eyes. Regardless of his situation, he continued to transfer the wounded to the aircraft while being under heavy fire. He killed two other enemy soldiers who were rushing towards the aircraft from an angle that prevented the aircraft door gunner from firing on them. With his strength dwindling, he made one final journey around the perimeter to ensure that all of the secret information had been collected or destroyed, and then in a very critical condition, he dragged himself into the extraction plane. The Brave Man At least eight soldiers were saved by Benavidez's brave decision to voluntarily join his companions in perilous circumstances. His brave personal leadership, steadfast devotion to duty, and very valorous efforts in the face of overwhelming odds were in keeping with the greatest traditions of military service. Benavidez suffered a shattered jaw and 37 bullet and bayonet puncture wounds during the six-hour-long operation. His condition was so critical that his commanding officer did not believe he would live long enough to obtain the Medal of Honor, so he instead nominated him for the Distinguished Service Cross, which would take less time to process. However, Benavidez survived and was awarded with the Distinguished Service Cross. Medal of Honor after complete details on how events unfolded were out, Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel Ralph R. Drake insisted on Benavidez receiving the Medal of Honor in 1973. However, the medal's time limit had already passed. After appealing to Congress, Benavidez was granted an exemption, but the Army Decorations Board still denied him the Medal of Honor. The board sought an eyewitness account from someone who was present during the six hours in hell, but Benavidez suspected that no one else who was present was still alive. To their surprise, Brian O'Connor, who was a radio man with the attacking Special Forces squad, provided a 10-page summary of the engagement in 1980. O'Connor was gravely injured and transported to the United States before his superiors could fully debrief him. O'Connor had been living in the Fiji Islands and was on vacation in Australia when he read an El Campo newspaper report about Benavidez, as the news was reprinted in Australia after being picked up by the international press. O'Connor quickly found an old buddy and submitted his report, verifying previous stories and supplying the missing eyewitness. After receiving the necessary witness, President Ronald Reagan awarded Roy Benavidez the Medal of Honor on February 24, 1981. Throughout his illustrious career, Benavidez received the Medal of Honor, the Purple Heart, and countless other honors, as well as having numerous facilities named after him. The Life After Retirement Benavidez spent the last years of his life speaking to America's youth about the value of staying in school and acquiring a higher education. His message was straightforward. The key to success is education. You will be ruined by bad habits and bad company. In 1983, Benavidez alerted the press that the Social Security Administration wanted to cut off his disability payments, as well as the disability payments of thousands of other veterans, which he had been receiving since retirement. He advocated for them on Capitol Hill, pleading with the House Select Committee on Aging to drop their plans, which they eventually did. Benavidez was in high demand as a speaker for the United States Armed Forces, schools, military, and civic organizations, as well as private corporations. He also visited American military soldiers in Greece, Panama, Korea, and Japan, and even joined them on field exercises. He got messages of appreciation from students, military personnel, and private residents all across the world. He chronicled his life and military service in two autobiographies, and also authored The Three Wars of Roy Benavidez in 1986. Furthermore, Benavidez published Medal of Honor, A Vietnam Warrior's Story in 1995. The Last Abode Roy Benavidez died at Brook Army Medical Center on November 29, 1998 at the age of 63 from respiratory failure and diabetes complications. His body was carried to the Catholic Church of St. Robert Bellarmine, where he and his three children were married. He was subsequently returned to Fort Sam Houston's main chapel for a public viewing before being buried at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery in San Antonio with full military honors. Well, that's it for today's video. 
We hope you enjoyed the content of the video, and if you did, show some love and hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.